How are you doing? This is Tim. I hope you're doing well. Um, I'm I'm in the mood to do a video on spur gears. I have um, a couple of students there today were cornering me and uh, they weren't uh, they were giving me grief about spur gears and they were asking me specific questions on um, uh, pitch diameter, diametral pitch. Um, module pressure angle and um to be honest with you i was i can usually blag my way through these things and uh you know i i admitted that i needed to go back and um uh, tighten it up a little bit so i've I've done a little bit of my homework and uh what are you doing ollie i've done a little bit of my homework and um i'm going to use solarworks to try and explain um what this pitch business is all about and and uh, pitch diameter and stuff like that. Um, so I, I like to give my students a gear and uh, put it in front of them and ask them to reverse engineer. But that's let, let's 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 get a gear first. I'm going to use SolarWorks to, to kind of explain what I'm trying to do. So um, even if you don't know how to use SolarWorks, you should be able to follow a little bit what's going on. Um, I'm going to find a gear in McMaster Carter Spur Gear. And the first thing you'll see is this is our selection. We have gears that are plastic, we have gears that are metal, and uh, we have gear stock that you can cut, and we have racks. Um, we're just going to deal with with spur gears uh, this evening, and you're going to see two, you're going to see something right away. You're going to see twenty degrees pressure angle. And 14 and a half degrees pressure angle. That's the first thing. Let's talk about pressure angle. Um, if you look on Google and you look at pressure angle and you search for it in images, you're going to find an, in a diagram that's very, very complicated. And uh, honestly, I don't really understand pressure angle. What I, I, I don't really understand the important. I do know what's important. The first thing is is if you're if you're trying to get gears to mesh you need to use the same pressure angle. So you cannot just mesh a 14 and a half degree pressure angle with a 20 degree pressure angle. That's the first thing. Um, typically gears that are 20 degrees pressure angle are high load and the majority of gears that I've used are 14 and a half degrees pressure angle. Um, so I would just accept that. You know, I, I've designed lots of gearing systems without really having to understand the mathematics, the cosines and the tans of what the pressure angle is, to be quite honest with you. Um, so if you have a, a very, very high load application, you're going to use 20 degrees. If you have a very, very um, a normal application, you're going to use 14 and a half. Anything I've ever used has been 14 and a half. Now, that's the first thing. So let's we'll deal with 14 and a half now. These guys are machinable bore metal gears. They don't have a set screw to connect them to the shaft, and they don't have a keyway. You typically will have to drill these out using a lathe to the shaft size that you want. If you have the money, you should absolutely go with metal gears that have the keyway and the set screw. So that's where we're going to go. Okay, I'm going to, let's say we're going to have an application, and I want to... Uh, decrease the speed by one third. So let's say my um, motor is running at a thousand RPM and I want to decrease the speed and let's say I want it to rotate roughly 333. I want to I want to I want to decrease it by three times I want three times the torque. So if you use a gear ratio and you decrease it by three times the speed you're going to get three roughly three times the torque. If we assume the efficiency is 100%. So we're going to design a gearing system. And shut up, Ollie. And so we, we're, we're going to get two gears that both have 14 and a half degrees. Now, um, it, I'm going to, what pitch am I going to use? Just for example, I'm going to use a pitch of 20. The bigger the number gets, the finer the teeth. Is that right? The smaller the teeth. So I'm going to go with a pitch of 20. And the first gear I'm going to get, I'm going to get 20 teeth. The next gear I'm going to get is 60 teeth. You'll see why. 
So I'm going to open this up and I'm going to hit product detail and I'm going to save this as SolidWorks. I'm going to put it on my desktop and I'm going to double click. And this opens up this gear and we can see we can see it. This is no different from having a gear in your in your hand. Okay. Now what are the important things here? It tells me that the pitch is 20 and the number of teeth is 20. It already tells me that the pitch is 20. Now I gave my students a gear in front of them and I said, I want you to tell me what the pitch is. I gave them a gear and I gave them a calipers. And they said, okay, well, what's the equation for pitch? Now, I'm going to write this down on a piece of paper. You should write it down too. But pitch, or another word that you'll see, they call it diametral pitch. But pitch is equal to number of teeth over the pitch diameter. Now, let's say I give you a gear and and uh, you can calculate the number of teeth. How do you do it? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. I got 20 teeth. I can calculate that. So pitch is the number of teeth over the pitch diameter. So I have 20 over the pitch diameter. Now, let me just show you where the pitch diameter is. And, and, and I'll tell you why it's important. The pitch diameter is... I have three circles here. I have the outer diameter which is easy enough to measure by using the calipers. The inner diameter, which is like the minor diameter, which is the inside, which is, is easy enough using calipers. And then I have this diameter here, which is the pitch diameter. And this is kind of, that's the point where the two gears will intersect and mesh. Now my equation is pitch is equal to the number of teeth over the pitch diameter. How do I calculate the pitch diameter? That is a... That, that is a number that's given to you by the manufacturer. Now, this is not an accurate way, but a, an approximate way of doing it is we can go with the pitch diameter is the outer diameter plus the inner diameter, and you're going to go divide it by two, and that's going to approximately give me the halfway line. So how do we do that? Can I measure, if I go to... Evaluate, measure, and I have a pair of calipers. I'm imagining I'm using a pair of calipers now, and I'm going to go from one edge, I don't be like that, to another edge. And what do I get? I get 1.1 inches. Okay? So the outer is going to be 1.1 inches. Now, I suppose what I'm trying to show you is I'm trying to show you that I'm going to get what we know, you know. That the pitch is 20. Let's see if I can get close to 20. Okay. Now the outer diameter was 1.1. The inner diameter, which is going from there. Ah, shit. I'm having to pick on lines because um, I don't think the arcs are going to work it from for the measurement. Now, is that being a good boy? 0.87. So 1.1.87 over 2. Now I'm pretty melted, so I'm going to write down calculator 1.1 1 .1 plus 0 0.87, 1.97 divided by 2. So the pitch diameter is I'm getting is 0 0.985. Okay, 0.985. And then I'm going to go back to my equation. Pitch is the number of teeth over the pitch diameter. What is 20 divided by 0.985, which is roughly 1? I'm going to get a pitch of 20. So that's how we could kind of work our way around it. Um, now, let's create, let's create a, a gear train. And let me show you why the pitch diameter is important. So I have one gear here now that is has 20 teeth. Let me just write that down. I'm going to go back here to McMaster car. And I'm going to get another teeth. Well, not another teeth. Another gear that is 60 teeth. And I'm looking here. Number of teeth is 60. For, for, for shaft diameter, 3 eighths. And I'm going to just grab this here, right? 
on it now. And I'm going to go over here like so. Oh shit, what's wrong here? 637, did I not have that one? I got 6. Let's try it again. I go product detail. Save. And I have another one. Let's drag that out. There we go. Now we have two teeth, two gears. I'm going to create an assembly. And I'm going to put in the small gear. Beautiful. And I'm going to put in the large gear. You're going to like this. Stay with me. Even if you don't know SolarWorks, stay with me. And what am I going to do? This guy's floating and this guy's fixed. I'm going to uncheck this. And I'm just going to place these, put these guys in position. And... I'm going to draw, uh, right, let's do this. I need to draw the pitch diameter for this guy. And I need to find that out. It's telling me the big guy has a pitch diameter of 3 inches. Write that down. Let's go back. Let's go here. What's this pitch diameter here? It's 1 inch. Right. So what I'm going to do is I know the distance from there to there is a half an inch. So I need to I need to add the two of them together to get four inches. Divided by two is going to get two inches. Two inches is going to be my center to center distance. So I go here, I create a new part. There's better ways of doing this, but I'm I'm a bit tired. I'm going to get myself a plate. I'm going to get myself two circles. They're going to be 0 0.38, 0 0.375, make them equal. I'm going to put these two chaps two inches apart. I need to make this plate a little bit bigger. Let's make these three horizontal. All right. Let's put in the center line. Let's make this and this and this symmetrical. Now, let's make this plate 1.5. Let's make this 4 inches. Is that right? Something like that. We'll exit out of this. We'll extrude it. Let's make it 0.5. Way too big. But let's make it 0.375. I'll go OK. Now I'm not worrying about any bearings or shafts or any of this. And I'm going to call this my gear plate. Alright, and I'm going to insert my gear plate. And my gear plate will move around. I'm going to open up the gear plate. And I'm going to make the top plane with... That will work the top plane of the assembly. Um, what else do we need here? The front, the right. Let's go with the right plane. And I'm going to make that with the right plane of the assembly. There's quicker ways of doing this. And now this is going to move in this direction. And I'm going to make that face with the front plane. Good, good stuff. Now, now what am I going to do? If I've done my calculations correct, and I put that gear there, and I put that gear with this hole. I can add the shafts in later. Or you can add in the shafts later. And what do we do? We're just going to make that to there. You would never do that in real life. It's going to cause a lot of friction. But it, for... You use a bearing. Alright. Now. So what we will do is I'm just going to move these. That's interesting. Why is that a lot thicker? Um, that's, that's no good. We can't have that. So let's fix these two and that. What can I do? Watch this. Can I mate there with that? It's not going to be happy. No, I want that to be coincident. It's going to whinge. No, it doesn't like that. Okay, we're going to have to delete all those mates. No, I'm just going to delete these two. 
and I'll show you something else. Let's pull this out and mate this one with this and flip it. That'll do the job. And I'm going to mate this one with that and flip it. Good lad. And let's look at this dead on. So that's that's it. They're amazing. Um, and what I can do now is, um, you're, you're going to like this. I'm going to go. That plate isn't big enough anyway. But look, um, mate, I'm going to go advanced mates. No, mechanical mates. Gear. Now. I'm going to select this face and this face. Now, can I do this right? The ratio. Is going to be 1 to 2. And let's see, does this work? No, 20 to 30. 1 to 3. So it really should be three, three rotations of this should equal one rotation of that. Let's see if we can do it. Okay, wrong way. So let's go back. Gear mate. Reverse. Let's see, does this work? I'm going to look at this dead on. Okay, I see what the problem is. Okay, what an idiot. Uh, reverse. One. It's to three. Okay. Oh, now we're cooking. And that's it. So what am I trying to say? Number one. If you want your gears to mesh, you have to use the same pitches. You have to use the same pressure angles. You need, you, you find, uh, if, you, if you're using two gears, you're finding their pitch diameter. And you add the two pitch diameters of the gears and you divide by two. And that's going to give you center to center distance. Um, you would never butt a gear up against a plate like that. You would use a small washer or better still, you'd use bearings. You can, you can buy flange bearings that will, one of the inner bearings, will the inner raceway will protrude. Um, and that's it. Do you know? So what else? So hopefully that, hopefully you've gotten something out of it.